Okay, so I finally figured out this screen capture thing again, and today we're going to get a little bit of Pro Tools in. So let's talk about automation and Pro Tools and how to do it. Okay, so first of all, what is automation? Well, automation is basically an automatic control. So when you automate a parameter, you're setting its values ahead of time so that it can do its thing without your involvement in real time. So in Pro Tools, if we were talking about something like the levels fader on a track, you can automate that so that the levels can automatically change as you play the track back. It's like automatic mixing. And you can do this with a bunch of different parameters. So volume, panning, muting, and even some plugin parameters. So today I'll show you guys a couple of basic ways to automate parameters. So to begin with, you can open up the automation lane for a track when you're in the edit window by clicking where it says waveform at the head of the track and then selecting the parameter that you want to automate. Here you can view any automation that's on the track. In this view, you can use the edit tools to change the automation lane. You'll notice that these changes that I made with my edit tools are followed when I hit play on the track. You can also open up an automation lane as a subtrack within the edit window and work with it the same way. So that's one way to work with automation, but we also have our automation modes in the mix window. So click where it says read and you'll see the options here, off, read, write, touch, latch, and sometimes touch latch. You might also have the trim option, which lets you make adjustments to already done automation by offsetting the automation values that already exist. So with trim, instead of overriding what's already there in terms of automation, it makes an adjustment to it based on what you do. Off mode basically disables the automation, so any automation you've done is ignored in this mode. So read mode basically reads the automation you've already done. This is the default mode because it's simply reading the automation you've made. You're not changing the automation during playback in this mode, and you'll see the knobs and faders for each corresponding parameter move in real time as you play back your track. So write mode. Now a lot of people ignore write mode because the way it works is it overwrites everything. So when you hit play, it will overwrite all existing automation, whether you touch any of the parameters or not. So if I have some existing automation on the volume fader for a track and I switch into write mode and hit play, but I don't touch anything, everything in that section that I played will be overwritten. It's good if you want a fresh start on your automation though. Touch mode. So I like touch mode because it only writes automation data on a parameter that you touch while you're touching it. So if I have automation already on my volume fader, for example, I can hit play, let the automation I've already done for a second play, and then click and hold on the fader to make an adjustment in real time. Once I let go of the parameter, it fades back to the values in the previously done automation. And you can set how fast this fade happens in your preferences. So latch mode. I don't use latch as much, but it's similar to touch mode. The only difference is that once you let go of the parameter, it stays at the value that it was at when you let go. So the automation isn't overwritten until you touch the fader or knob for the parameter. But then when you let go, it does not fade to the previously written automation value. So it stays exactly where it was when you let go. Okay, so that's it. Those are the basic automation modes. Now, one more thing before we finish up this video, you can also automate some plugin parameters. So if you're in one of the automation modes for writing to a parameter, you can enable automation for all the parameters on a given plugin by pressing Control, Option, and Command, and then clicking on the Plugin Automation Enable button. It looks like a couple of folders at the top of the plugin window. In this example plugin, it's a 7-band EQ that comes with Pro Tools, you'll be able to see that the plugin automation parameters are automation enabled because they will light up red if they're ready to be written to, or green if they're actively enabled for automation, and that depends on if you're in read mode or something else. If you want to open up more options for a specific parameter within the plugin, you can then hold the same key combo, so Control, Option, and Command, and then click on the parameter to see more options. 
One more thing to keep in mind is that once you start automating a parameter, for example, the level fader on a track, if the track is in read mode, it will jump to whatever level was automated. So especially with something like the volume faders for each track, I like to get a rough mix by just setting their levels in the mix window before I move on to the automation. I usually try to get a good mix for each track's level relative to each other using just clip gain and the faders in the mix window before I move on to automation. This is because once I start automating a track's fader, if I later move it in the mix window, it will just snap to the automated level that I had previously set, which undoes the move I just tried to make in the mix window. So that's it. I hope you guys liked this video. For today's question, I want to know, do you find that at the end of a mixing session, you're more likely to hate the mix, but maybe like it the next day with a fresh ear? Or do you more often love the mix and then hate it more the next day? Please leave your answers in the comments below. Also, if you like this video, please hit the little like button, share the video, or subscribe to my channel. I'll be coming out with new videos every other Wednesday, and thanks for watching. Okay.